everyone, we are back again. JFL Live is in the house. And of course, you got me, Tony G's, Duval's Finest, in the house. And we got a big show for you today. And we got a lot of stuff we're going to talk about. We're going to hit it hard today. We're going hard. So before we get started, let me start by introducing the cast on the show. Johnny Jaguar, what's up, baby? Uh, what's up, everybody? Hope everybody's having a good day. Can't wait for today's show. We got big presence in the house. Someone's about the same size as John, so I wonder who went in a fight. But what's up, Big Hand? <laughs> yeah, what up, baby? It's your boy, Big Hand, at JFL Live. We are here. I got a special gift. I got my dog. I got my left hand, the end that we took and shut down the run. Nothing. Never coming our way. You know it is. Paul Spicer. What's up, bro? What what's up? going on, baby? Dude. Oh, in the house, baby, live from Tampa, man. Coming all the way from Hillsborough County, but hey, I still rep Duval. There it is, there it is, man. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, Tony, what's up, man? What's going on? Talk to me. Hey, listen, today I'm, I was going to have a topic, John, but after me and you talked earlier, the topic for Tony's talk today has to be parents. <laughs> Make sure you teach your kids respect. We're going to talk about this later, but gonna it, is, it is on the parents for the kids to show some respect. And yep. if you can't control your kid, nobody else can. We're yep. going to talk about this later, and then y'all know why I brought this up. Let's hit it, John. Johnny Jaguar, do we got anything in Jaguar News? What we got, baby? What we got? I mean, you know, it's a slow mo right now. Uh, possible trades for the right tackle of the Ravens that they're going to try to convert to the left side. Uh -huh. uh, Possibly that. Trent Richardson, they're talking about him. And then with Cam Robinson, are they going to franchise tag him or let him walk? Uh, so they're just trying to do that kind of stuff right now. I don't think they can technically do anything until, I think, the middle of March. So there's yeah. a lot of speculation on going there. Uh, but that's it right now. Man. Jaguar News is quiet. Well, let's, we're, we're, we're finna go to get Spice, man. I'm glad. Thanks for coming on the show, brother, man. And, uh, you know, I always tell people when I bring my brothers on, man, just what's what's been going on with you, man, and life out the football for you, man. How's it been? How has it been for you, man, since you left the league? Oh man, I mean, you know what? I really didn't really leave the league because okay. right after football, you know, I I tried to jump right into coaching. You know, what I mean, oh. when, you, when you play till you're 35 years old and you're around a bunch of young 20 year olds, I was coaching even though I was still playing. You know, right. and Helping guys like you know young Mints out, you know, he, helping you know guys, you know Harvey and those guys. My man Gucci, may he rest in peace. Um, you know, helping those guys out, but not only helping them on the field, but really off the field. You know, I remember the day you you got drafted, man, and we went out to Jim's place. Yeah, I give him a little shout out. You know, it's been, it's been, hey, they're it's still been around, little... too, by the way. They still <laughs> around. But you know, you know, Big John was a young man coming in there. I mean. Everything changed, but it's little thinny calves, man. But uh, <laughs> but man, Big John had a great time, man, and got a chance to just take him out, see a little bit of Jacksonville. Jacksonville ain't got a big nightlife, but you know, I want to show the, I want to show hospitality to a young draft pick. And and the thing about it is, is that since I I retired, I got into coaching. I mean, I coached a little bit of high school, got an opportunity to intern with the Jags, and moved into a position as assistant D line coach. You know, but when they had staff changes, you know, you got to change. So I left, went to Jackson State, you know, where, De you know, Dion is at right now. Prime time as the head coach of Jackson State. You know, big up to him and what he's doing with HBCUs, trying to put him on the map. But it wasn't a good fit for me. I stayed there for about six months, and then I, I had to leave, man. It was it was really a strain and a stress on my family and families first. Guys got to always understand that you got to put your family first for any job, any amount of money. So I, I came back home with Jacksonville and, and got the opportunity to go down to Tampa and um, be an assistant D line coach in Tampa. So I, I been, so now I'm I picked up the family. We moved down to Tampa. So now we're here in Tampa full time um, and and got chance to play. Not excuse me, excuse me, play, but coach there for four years. And then I went into USF in 2019 as their D line coach and was with Charlie Strong as the head coach. Things didn't, you know, we had a had a down year. You know, they had big, big expectations coming off the season that they had, big expectations. Things didn't work out. 
I don't know what happened. Like I said, when you a coach, man, you just keep your head down. You're grinding. You're trying to help your guys out the best you can. But, you know, head coaches and and, and, and ADs and owners and all those, you know, those people, the executives, I mean, they got their own agenda. And sometimes you don't, you know, you don't fit in the equation. And we had, they had to make a change at USF. So since then, you know what, I was out, COVID hit, man. And I mean, I kind of stayed in the house. You know, I wasn't trying to get out and catch no COVID. Thank God I've been, I've been, you know, outside hitting them grocery stores, man, trying to, you know, stay safe. I mean, I hope everybody out there staying safe, you know, being smart about it. If you do get out, mass up, you know, it, it ain't going to take long mass up. I know it's uncomfortable, it's uncomfortable to me, but you know, also brush your teeth too, because you know, you smell your own breath. I myself a couple of times, but you know, it reminded me, damn, man, I ain't going to brush my teeth this morning. But you know, but the thing about it is, 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 is you know, right now I'm working on, um, putting together the offensive line, defensive line um, performance center. That's that's kind of what's in the works right now for me. Wow. Hey, man. Hey, know- hey, hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know I got to say something before I forget. You know that, yeah, we go out to work together on that. You, we might well team up because that's what I want. Big Man University, that's what we want. That's what I am. Man, it's Big Man Performance. That's that's the name, man. I just pulled it. Hey. Hey. Come on down, bro. Hey, hey, we can franchise this thing. You feel me? Hey, I feel you, bro. Hey, if I, I now can do it, we can do it. Absolutely. Hey, I'm telling you. So, man, I'm, you proud, mentioned... I'm proud to hear you doing that because uh, it's funny. You're in Tampa. I guess uh, Jabbar Gaffney's in Tampa. We talked to him, excuse me, last last week. And and he was still trying to figure out what he wanted to do. And and, and he and I had a good talk. And, and so as I, as I see all the players that I know, Everybody either moved to Tampa or Texas. I don't know what's that about. <laughs> I ain't going to Texas. You see what they dealing with right now. <laughs> That's hey, Spice. hey, Spice. So, what, man, I'm, I'm going to hit on what you was talking about because we're going to get in this topic with Cam Newton and this little kid in the down in the camp. So, my whole point is y'all see what Spice did for me as I gave him the respect as, you know, even though I'm a rookie, what's his name? I, I, I got my knowledge from him. Y'all see what he, he just said. I tell y'all this on the show all the time. And, and tell me this, fight: is it going on now since what? You was coaching from 2018 to whenever. Do they still do what we used to do? Absolutely, man. It, it hasn't changed. The fact of the matter is what, what the youth today need to understand is when somebody that's been there, done that, and got the experience behind it, you know, I, what I'm doing now is really just taking and reversing and going back and say, look, you know, I, let me help you. You know, be open and, and open-minded and be coachable to allow me to help you not only be a better player, better lineman, but be a better man. That, that's the thing that too many times we got parents out here don't want to discipline their kids, but that's okay. You know, if you don't want to, I will. You know, I mean, I, I mean I'm going to tell your child exactly what they need to know because the real world is going to do that. And the fact of the matter is too many times we, we sit there, we bite our tongue because you, you can't tell the truth anymore. You can't be real with people anymore because people don't want to hear the facts. They want to sit there and believe what the idiot box TV says or what somebody on, on Instagram or, or Twitter or Snapchat. I mean, they got more social media sites I can count now. So I mean, they want to believe that, you know, TikTok and all those things before they want to believe somebody that's actually lived it, breathed it, done it, worked it. And still doing it today, man. You, you man, you, I, I can't hold back no more. I'm telling you, y'all that's done it. led me into it. That damn Cam Newton stuff is. I, I tell you what, that's the worst thing I've seen in a long time. John, I know you got. I, John got excited about it, Paul. Yeah, I hadn't seen it to the day, and 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 I, I tell you what, that's the most disrespectful. And and I'm proud of Cam. He tried to handle it the best he can. And, and I'm going to tell you guys something. Parents, got to control your kids. That's not the first time that kid has been disrespectful. That didn't just happen that day. Wow. I haven't watched the video. Oh, Lord. But you know you know the whole thing. See, I don't I done caught on to what kids are doing. That wasn't enough for just to give them the fame. Cam said, he get, I'm going to give you this time. Yeah, I'm going to give you this time. And that's what he did. And he, then the kid go go uh, kind of just was being quiet then, but see that's what I'm saying. You you ask for something you know, you really don't want it. <laughs> that's but what, what I did, but I, here's the problem though, John and, and and parents. I hope they listening that that's watching us and hearing us right now. Here's the problem with that. 
Here's the problem when you don't discipline your own child. The fact of the matter is, despite this, this young man is, is at Cam's camp and right. he's there, he's there to learn. He's there to, to maybe take something, get a nugget and, and take it back yep. and be able to apply it to, to his own life, his own game. But the fact of the matter is he didn't do that. You know, he, he wanted to sit there and go at somebody who's already proven. And Cam has been through a lot. So you want to go at somebody that's proven and is at the height of, you know, the pinnacle, the NFL. That, you don't get no – there ain't no league above the NFL. And the fact of the matter is, is now what parents are not realizing is that this young man in his 20 seconds of fame is probably going to cost himself a scholarship yeah. okay, uh, to, a, to a university because, like I said, I coached in the universities. I've been in those meetings. I know what we talk about. We look at social media. We look at the Internet. We try to find what the hell you're doing and who you are through all these different avenues. The NFL does it, too. The, right now, right over there at uh, TAA Bank Field, okay, as well as Tampa Bay, you know, stadium, um, right over there right now at One Buck Place, right there in the scouting departments, and not just the Tampa and Jacksonville, every NFL team, the security in the scouting department, they have somebody they pay to look through all your social media. So if you were, if you were a guy that's coming out of college and you've been acting ignorant, regardless of who you are, all they do is build a profile on you, okay? So when you get, when it's time to, you know, the draft come up and you don't get drafted where you thought you got drafted, well, man, hey, look in the damn mirror. Stop stop trying to point the finger at everybody else. Well, accountabil- accountability now is, is is not there anymore. People don't ever want to take responsibility anymore. No. That's in the workplace and professional athletes. Okay. But I have a question for you. So you're talking about, you know, this kid being disrespectful. He's trying to learn and stuff. You've had an interesting career growing up. I mean, you coming from Indiana, Indiana, like myself, Fort Wayne in the house. Oh, uh, you went to a small Lord. school. And we might be you know, cousins. I got a lot of people in Fort Wayne as, as family, the Hardemans, man. They ate a lot of them in the Hey, world. man, you can't mess with Fort Wayne. I try to tell Tony, man, you think Jacksonville's bad. Oh, Fort Wayne, Fort Wayne. Wayne. But no, so like, tell us your story. Because you went from a, a small school, mm-hmm. and then, you know, you went in the NFL. Had, you know, you dabbled your toes in it. Then you took it back to Canada. And then you came back to the NFL. So tell us your story about, like, how did you prevail? Because that took a lot of strength to be here for a little bit, come back, come back. You know what I'm saying? So tell I, us your story. Well, number one, the way I prevailed, man, I trust God. That's number one. And and, and not I don't think enough of us out here is, is putting that trust in God. And, and it's already hard enough, you know, and everything that we deal with when you're trying to pursue a professional career, in any career, not just football. And for me – you know, going to junior college, okay? I mean, my grades wasn't the greatest because, again, education wasn't at the top of the list as far as, you know, making the grade when I was in high school. In my home, in my household, where way we was raised, mom said, you know, go to school, we went to school, you know, or she going to get in at A. Um, but the fact of the matter is, that was, that was the kind of it. After that, as far as, hey, your homework is done, are you doing what you're supposed to be doing, that was not so much. But the fact is that I didn't realize that until later on in, in my high school career when football was taken away from me. I was cut. I was a sophomore playing on the football team. That was really my first time of being on organized football. So I got cut. Didn't understand why, but the coach set me down and was real with me. He told me the truth of why I was cut <laughs> because of my grades. And, and, and if I want to be able to get opportunity to get out of Indianapolis, Indiana, okay, growing up the way I grew up, I've been on welfare spending them food stamps. You know, we didn't have the EBT card back in those days. You had those paper stamps, which was embarrassing as hell to go up in there and pull those damn things out of that book. And you had to pay for that, pay for your food, candy or whatnot. So, you know, kids today, they can just swipe that little EBT card and still hide the thing under your hand. But no, we had to rip in front of the thing on cash register and, and put that food stamp, you know, that five that purple $5. Look like Monopoly yep. money, you know. But anyway, I, I, I want to move on. Um... Let, just let people know where I'm from. You know, I'm not, I, like I said, wasn't drafted. You know, like I said, went to junior college, man, because of grades. I balled out. You know, I was an All-American outside linebacker, all right? Actually went in the Hall of Fame just three years ago. My school, they put together, I mean, well, NJ. Oh, let's, let's give him a clap, guys. Hall of Fame. Yeah, they put me in the Hall of Fame, man. They put me in the Hall of Fame, and a few years ago, um, NJCAA, 
you know, National Junior College uh, Coach Association put me in the Hall of Fame, you know, being being the type of player I was as an outside linebacker for a college of DuPage, out, right outside of um, Chicago, Glenelg, Illinois. They still they still playing ball up there right now. Um, shout out to Coach Foster. I mean, he just had to retire through the health reasons and even asked me to come and be the coach, but I can't coach you, Coach. Well, they don't pay. <laughs> <laughs> Wife ain't going for that. <laughs> but anyway, man, but no, um, from junior college, man, because again, I didn't have the foundation to understand, you know, truly, I got to hit the grades. I mean, people don't even notice about me. And you ain't gonna find us in Google, man, my first two years in college, I slept on the floor with a pillow. You know what I'm saying? Because the fact of the matter is, is that my mom and them didn't have the money to lace my apartment out you know, give me money to be able to go get a bed and all this. So, you know, hey, I, I, I did what I had to do. It was either do that or go back to Indianapolis and I already knew what was back there, you know, get on that, get on that real grind that them brothers got to deal with. And I, I want to know parts of that. So I slept on that floor, got up every day, you know, did what I did to try to get to school. Um, but again, didn't understand like I said, I wasn't taught. Nobody had no mentor to, you know, hold my hand and say, hey, hey, man, turn this way. Don't go left, go right. So I did too many left turns while I was in junior college and found out that, hey, I had to graduate to go to a big time because I had a lot of I had a lot of offers from a lot of big time schools, especially when you're up in the Midwest. A lot of Big Ten schools came in. We were undefeated. I never lost a college game in, um, in, in um, junior college. We were undefeated. Wow. 24-0. If you can say that. <laughs> never lost. I never lost a game. So we we balled out, you know. And when schools came, they were like, "Hey, man, if you do this, you do that, and graduate." And I'm looking at how long it's going to take me to graduate. I said, "Nah, man." So I was like, "What other options do I have?" And you know, the coach Madugu, Bob Madu, who was the head coach at the time, set me down and said, "Look, look, Paul, you're a great player, man, but you know the academics is, is hurting you." He said, "This is the only route you can take is you go, you go, you leave now, and you can go to Division Two." And I was like, Division Two, man, what what is that? You know, I didn't even know nothing about Division Two football at that time. But you know what? He, you know, I went that route. Coach Keel, who has wow. now moved on and did so many things, but his first head coaching job was Saginaw Valley State University in Saginaw, Michigan. Okay, he was offensive coordinator at Pittsburgh State out of Kansas. So when he came and got the job at Saginaw, they guys recruited me. I mean, I thought that they had a, a, a apartment in our in our facility because I saw those coaches. It was Dave Weimer, the defense coordinator uh, for Coach Keel. He was in there every day. And you know what? I just felt like, you know what? I took five visits, man. And each visit I went to, Saginaw was really the only place to say, hey, Coach Keel was like, hey, I don't want you to worry about nothing. You got to you, – where you come from, I know your background. Where you come from, I know you got – a lot of things going on. I don't want you worried about money because I know that's that's a big you know issue for you because out of the five visits I, 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 I took, four of them told me I had to pay for something. And when you told me that, I was out. I was like, this. it don't matter what you told me. After. Once you told me I had to pay out of my pocket, knowing that I had nothing in my pocket but lint, I was like, hey, I'm out. And, you know, Saginaw was like, no, we want, we're going to take care of you. Your Pell Grant go in your pocket. So that way you have a little money to be able to buy yourself something. I was like, right. cool. I mean, when they told me my Pell Grant went in my pocket, I was like, but you know, my, my Pell Grant went in my pocket, but it went to my mama because I had to help her out. Right. You know, I mean, I'd send money back to mom to help her out because, again, she's still struggling with the other three siblings that she, she still has. Even though it was five of us, my older brother was, you know, out doing his thing, but he was in and out of prison and stuff. But my other three siblings were still back with mom. So, you know, I, I sent a little money back home to help her out, even though when you're on scholarship and what people don't realize, when you're on a full scholarship, no matter if it's Division two or Division um, uh, a one, you can't work. You can't have a job. It, 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 it binds you to the, to the school, basically. And you can only get a job in the summer when your scholarship is not really implemented. But outside of that, you can't have a, you can't have a job. So if you come from a poor situation like I did, you can't go out and get a job and, a, and have a scholarship. So the fact wow. of the matter is, is that, you know, I went to Saginaw and I did my thing. I mean, I, I was still a good football player. I balled out. I ended up being MVP of the league my senior year, you know, and um, got an opportunity with Seattle. I was there for a cup of coffee and, and a sandwich. You know, I mean, it didn't last long because a Division II, 235 pound defensive end, you know, just wasn't at that time, smaller DNs wasn't the end thing. You know, that came after me. But um, the Canada man. So, got what, so, what was your mindset at that point when, because a lot of people overcome stuff. So, you get in the league and they're saying basically you're too small to play D line. 
Am I right? They, that was that was that was their mindset about me. But the fact is, as I went through training camp, you know, in, in many, many camps and in the training camp, I came away with, regardless if I was going to get cut or make the team, I came away with, I can play in this league. I mean, my confidence was just that high. And I took that same confidence to Canada. Like, I can play in this, I can, I can, play, I can play in the NFL. I mean, I got laughed at by some of the guys that who went through the NFL route several times, but they ended up in Canada. And I told all those dudes, I said, hey, man, I'm going back to the league. I said, I'm only here for the last few months, and I'm going back to the league because when you go from NFL training camp to Canada, Canada season's already going. Their season's already right. in play. But they pull players from, from training camps, and they could add them to their, their roster. So I was, I was telling them, Cass, hey, I'm going back. And sure enough, I did that. And the crazy thing about it is you won't read this in no Google or Wikipedia. They tried, Canada tried to sue me, myself and like five other players who what they, the way our contracts were structured is if we get cut, it would a trial with with the NFL team, then we go back up there. And what they what the NFL does now, because now I think I've been coaching the NFL, they cut you to put you on practice squad because it's a two different type of contracts. Okay. A lot of people out there think a brother on practice squad, he's making hella money. No, man, he ain't making no money. He's making a few thousand dollars, you know, a, a week, which is, you know, people think that's a lot of money. But the problem is, is that we as we all know, more money, more problems, and you spend more. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not that, you know, you're making that money to really live that life. You're just making money to get by. And I, I was on that practice squad, man. Detroit put me on practice squad. And I got opportunity a couple of, late, in the, late in the season, 1999 with Detroit. And, um, and you know, it, it rolled in now into the year 2000. Um, got injured, and when you a cat on the bubble, you get injured. I got cut. So well, hold on a second. What was it like? So you you got cut by Seattle. Like, how does Canadian people just reach out and say, "Hey, we want you to come to Canada"? What was your mindset? Because John, I hate the cold. Tony, y'all know I hate the motherfucking cold. Like, what's it like saying, "Hey, come play in Canada"? You know, so <laughs> far from the family. It's dark. It's snowy. It's ice. Like, tell us that situation. Man, I, I will tell you this. I mean, at that time, because again, I'm from Indiana. You from Indiana? The cold was never an issue with me. And it, it so you moved down was. here. Then you're like, oh, well, even days. when I came to Jacksonville and we played in the cold, I wasn't one of those brothers out there with long sleeves on. I mean, I learned. I learned, you know, through watching the vets. Hey. Put that Vaseline, close them pores up, slap some Vaseline on it so they can stay cold. John, John know when we played up in Green Bay, what you got to do. I mean, you mix <laughs> it in with the Vaseline and they got this other warming oil that they give you. You mix that stuff together, you put it between them toes, you put it around them arms and the armpit because that stuff's going to be exposed to the elements. You put it around your ears. They had a little muffs in our helmets to keep our ears warm. I mean, really, the only thing you really need – is your feet and them hands. You can keep those two things warm, man. In the cold game, you can you can ball out. <laughs> you can ball. It was the two hardest things to keep warm. Hey, that, hey that, that's the realest, man. Nobody, hey, them things you trying to, as a defensive line, when you know you got to grab him and them things curl you like this, man. Hey, them things hurt, boy. Frostbite is a beat, boy. I'm going to tell you, it felt like so it. What, it felt what was like your it. first game like? What was your, when you first got there, what was that like? Going to Canada, yeah. what, what city was it in? I was in Saskatchewan. We were Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And Saskatchewan literally could give you an insight. Literally, it was like flat playing the tallest building, no lie, with like six stories. And their stadium, I call it Green Bay of the Canada League, Canadian League, because our we we their fans, the stadium set like 40, 50,000. They were packed out. I mean, when what? I got there, they, yeah, they were packed. It was packed. Halloween, Halloween, you know, came and it was snow everywhere. I was like, wait a minute, I, I I'm from Indiana. We don't get Halloween. We don't get snow on Halloween. I, I ain't used to this. And plus, we had to wait for the city streets to be clear before they come clear the field. So we went out and tried to practice on grass. And you know, it, at that time, every field except one team had turf, the old school astral turf. And the way they had it was it was all sand. So each line on the field, like a hash mark, was like a little bit speed bump of sand. It was <laughs> covered up with covered up with astral turf. Oh man, it was jacked up. I mean, I'm I'm I'm, I'm thank God that I didn't get hurt up there because their fields back in those days were terrible. God. Man, oh, did you <laughs> So when did you know, like, this isn't for me. I'm going to the NFL. I can't do this. 
it, it wasn't about, you know, this ain't for me or anything like that. It was just, I took the same mindset that I, 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 I took to Seattle up to Canada. That I knew I was good enough. I just got to go do my thing and show and show and show these scouts that I am good enough and get an opportunity. And, you know, the great thing about Detroit, my senior year, they had their training camp at Saginaw. So they knew about me. You know, they already knew. They saw me in action. It was, I'm, I was just a few hours up the road from Detroit with, with Saginaw. And so they already knew about who I was and what I was about. Um, and, you know, hey, Seattle, I did okay in the preseason. Didn't work out. Go up to Canada for three months. I balled out. And, you know, up there, D. Lyman, you got to you gotta line a yard off the ball in Canadian League. See, oh, people yeah. think it's just regular football. And they got 12 men on the field. So it was oh, a little wow. different. It was a little different for me playing with 12 guys plus all the linemen. You got to line a yard off the ball. So it was crazy because I was like, what you going to do on goal line? You got to line up a yard off the dang on ball. All you got to do is just put the, just lean over and, and score. And, and, and honestly, I was in plays like that, which was crazy to me. But the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, from there, man, I, I, I got my opportunity, you know, when I got cut to Detroit to come to Jacksonville and I seized it. I, two weeks after getting cut from Detroit, I came down to Jacksonville, Coach Coughlin, you know, um, Coach Pease, who was a D-line coach. Um, at the time, the uh, coordinator was uh, Dom Capers, who was our defense coordinator at the time, with, you know, two paid Dom, you know, Dom got that face. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, and I went out there, man, and it was hot. That was my, actually my second time in my life ever being in Florida in 2000, <laughs> when I came down in 2000, I think it was September the first, it was the week leading up to the game of Cleveland. That's the game um, that um, was, 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 man, uh, Jason uh, Moody. Uh, Jason Moody. Uh, huh? uh, no, 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 John, you, you was on that team. I, that wasn't the ball. No, no, uh-uh, that was, that's it. No. I was, I came Oh, yeah, you, no, you came, you came in 02, John. Yeah. That next year, Stroud, that was Stroud's year. I'm sorry, that was Stroud's first year. You're right. That was, that was the next. That was in 2001. But I'm talking about 2000. You were still in college, running around, with that, running around with that big old horse collar, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> running around trying to make yourself look even bigger. You didn't have to do that. <laughs> oh, man. My neck was really hurting, bro. I, 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 yeah. why, you, why you hell you have Joe Sheehan slap shit at you? <laughs> like, like that was a smart move. You got a bad neck, but you want somebody to slap you. That don't make no sense. <laughs> So the, the so crazy about your story is it's like you're here for a little bit, here for a little bit, here for a little bit, boom, you get to Jacksonville, you're here nine years. Yeah. Like it's just crazy how situ- like when you're put in situations, how it might not be good for you, but you go to somewhere else and it's like the perfect situation. You gotta I mean that this is crazy. Man. It was a perfect storm. I mean, I can remember my first game playing in Jacksonville was the Dallas Cowboy game in year two thousand. Um, Joe Smingy pulled his calf, Ronaldo Wynn was hurt, and you know, they brought me up. And I was four weeks in of being at the um at the Jaguar organization, and I got brought up, man, and, and signed to active roster. And I went out there in that game, man. It was an overtime game. I got my first second career of my career versus a all, all pro Eric Williams, probably one of the most physical guys I ever went against. In my career, I mean, he was head button, leg whipping, and what he didn't know, because he thought, "Oh, this guy paused by. He don't know nothing. He old skinny defensive." And at the time, I was bigger than two thirty five. I put on some weight since then. I was about two fifty, two fifty five, and he was like, "Oh, little skinny DN, don't know. No, ain't, I'm from Saginaw. We're, he can't, he can't play." So he tried. Like, oh, <laughs> that's a Midwest he, mind state right there. <laughs> wait, 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 right, and that's the thing. He didn't understand that, dude. I love the physicality. That was. Like playing against Pittsburgh was my favorite team to play against. Oh, because you knew they're going to line up. They're going to try to, st- at that time uh, of back in the day at Pittsburgh, they're going to line up. Coward had those boys. He, you can hear on the sideline, run the ball. So you knew they were going to run the ball. And I mean, I just, dude, I love the physicality. And I mean, I was able to because through the work and technique, you know, I had good run technique. And I really believe that. The practice I put in to refine myself as a football player, it allowed me to have the longer career. And I mean, I took care of my body too. I mean, I still went out and hung out and have a good time with the fellas. We 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 drank and you know, big hand. We 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 had to, you know, we went through the great goose bottles. I mean, we had a great time. But the fact of the matter is, when it was time to work, we worked and we put that work in. When you do that and you and you 
you do that, you get success. And that's why we was able to be able to win and go to the playoffs and have some success we had. So, you know, when I got my opportunity, got my first sack, man, it was sack, actually it was sack force from on Randall Cunningham. There's a name we had, you know, people ain't Ooh, talking about. Ah, you know. yeah, Randall man. Cunningham was the first quarterback I ever sacked, man. And he wasn't the Randall Cunningham of Tecmo Bowl. I'm going to say that too. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't that dude. But, uh, you know, for you old heads out there, man, he wasn't that guy. But you know what? I mean, we won the game, man. And honestly, I never looked back. And the career really took off. And, I mean, I wasn't a guy that Coach Coughlin had to worry about because literally Coach Coughlin, he found me. I've only been found one time in my whole career at Jacksonville, and that was Coach Coughlin my very first week because I walked on the field and there was a, a group, the team was over there. But I'm coming out with, you know, four or five other guys thinking that, hey, that's my first, my first practice, you know. And because he blew the whistle, he jog over. Come, I come in uh, two days later. I come back to my my um my locker. I got a letter, confidential written on it. John, you remember those? <laughs> like letter with confidential written on it. I'm like, what the hell is this? So literally, I opened it up, read it. I took it down to Coach Calvin. I said, Coach Calvin, what, what what's going on, man? What is this? And then he was like, Oh, I find you. I'm like, for what? You wasn't you wasn't you wasn't ready. You wasn't ready. You wasn't ready for what do you mean? You wasn't ready? He was like, You wasn't with the team. I said, Coach, I was with the team. I walked out on the practice field. He was like, When I blew the whistle. The guys that were on the sideline that came out, they were ready. You guys walking on the field, you guys wasn't ready. So you're fine. I said, man, this is some bull. And How I much was it? Fine? 500. Yeah. 500. And I'm on, and at that time I was on practice squad, bro. So that was Make like no money. That was that was like that was like 35, 40% of my check. I was like pissed because I was like five hundred dollars bro. I got kids. And you know what I mean? I, I didn't really talk about my family through the, through my process because at that time. Um, you know, I had two kids, you know, was married, had two kids. You know what I mean? I, I got a family to feed, man. You taking money out of my pocket over some nonsense, you know, and that's ultimately, you know, what led to him being a body there because of how he was, you know, but, um, but like I said, you know, Calvin ain't my guy anyway. I mean, that's, you know, y'all guy, man. I ain't my guy. <laughs> no love for that dude. <laughs> I ain't got no love for him. And I don't care. So then, Everybody hey, watching. Hey, 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 wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so I got a question for you, Paul. Yeah. Because because I, I remember when you first got to Jacksonville. I'm a little older than them. <laughs> <laughs> a lot older. Yeah. Hey, so I remember when you first came to Jacksonville, and, and one of the jokes was <laughs> you was always happy, and it was a scary happy. <laughs> but you was on because I, I remember that. I remember talking to some of the players. They was like, "Yeah, man, he come on the field, and shit off. Like he get ready to hurt somebody." <laughs> hey man, hey, I, I was a physical. I played the game uh, as physical as I possibly can, man. I mean, I'm, I I want to hurt myself in the process, you know. I mean, the only guy out there that was probably just as physical or even more was Donovan Darius because he was gonna hit you. And then I mean, you, you had to get the hell out of the way when Double D was coming because he got me one time and I told him, I got up and told, hey, man, what the hell are you going? You know, because he, <laughs> he laid me out, you know. But, I mean, like I said, love, love Double D, my brother, will always be. Oh. And, um, you know, and all the guys on the team, man, because that's how it was. And that's why, I, again, when the whole captain thing kind of came out, you know, Del Rio didn't pick me as a captain. The, the, the guys did. John Henderson and all those guys, they picked me as a captain because yeah. they knew they was like, Yo, Spice represent us. He's he's uh, he's one of us. We ain't got to, you know, the coaches, whatever y'all want to think of him. Because, again, it was always a struggle to try to get paid in Jacksonville. You know, I didn't get paid to literally my last. I was on my last. I was on my last leg on the way out. And then they paid me. And then the next year they had a really a good excuse to really get me out of the door and say, oh, we, we overpaying you. That's BS. But you could they didn't even overpay me when I did get paid. I mean, I would, when you pay a rookie, they ain't never did nothing. 19 million. Y'all want to come and get me five. I mean, what the hell is going on? Right. Well, well, and, and, and I'm going to say this. So, you know, people always talk about the Jaguars because, you know, the last couple of years, we just done went through it. We done went through some bad times. And I always say to people, it's not just the athletes because, because if, you, if you made it to the NFL, 90% of the time, you were great. But in Jacksonville, Jacksonville is nothing like when you, when you first got here, and you guys knew each other. You guys was brothers. You guys was, everybody was tight. 
if you go talk to anybody on the Jaguar team right now, they might get named five people that play with them. <laughs> that's a shame, man. And, and, that, and that, that's, that's a shame. Just, and that's been the problem because when Jaguars was one game away from the Super Bowl, you know, a few years ago, um, you know, they had a lot of great talent on their team. And sometimes that talent can come together, man, and, and you can go on a run. And they went on a run. That was great. I was happy for Jacksonville, you know. Yeah. I want to see them come back and do well. Really, I do. But the fact of the matter is, is that when you have a front office that's out of touch with today's players, that's what you want. <laughs> and, and when you do that, that's why you see all those great talent, that great talent leave the team and trying to do everything they can to get out because that's all I heard. I mean, I was in, I'm, I'm in these meetings. I'm in when we're looking at free agents, to, you know, and all that. I'm in those meetings. And on top of that, I still got brothers that I played with that I know in the league, too. So I'm, I'm getting it from I'm getting it in both ears from the from the corporate side of the business side. And what that all means as far as, you know, hey, is this guy a good fit for organization or not? And then I'm hearing it from, you know, the retired players or, or some active guys that are still in it and, you know, how miserable they are and, and how they want to just, you know, get somewhere else. They want to go somewhere else. I mean, Jacksonville as a whole, it's, it's great. I mean, but the thing about it is if you're working for somebody that's making it, you know, a detriment every day, then you ain't going to want to be there. And then what happens, right. Jacksonville is, as, in a whole get a bad rap. And that's not, and that's unfair, but because it's a few guys that are up, that sit up high, look down low and treating people like shit. And that's what happens. Guys want to get the heck up out of there. And that's that's why the team has turned the other way where they should have been ascending. Jacksonville should be a perennial, at least playoff team with all the talent they acquired and these draft picks that they've had. <clears throat> so that goes to the next thing. Let me, let, me, uh, let, me, let me get this right here. Let me let me go on and bring this question up because, you know, I need to know this. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. All right, Spice. So your, your thoughts on 2007? Playoffs, David Garrard. We get to the second round, and I love I love the heck out of be left. I love you to death. I answered John. You ain't got to finish. <laughs> so so proud of. It. So you know what I'm about yeah. to say then. Yeah, I know. So what what, what I was I was you, fired up. Hey fired. John, we, we were all fired up, John, because we I, all I, knew I we I, all knew that 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 change. Shouldn't. Don't get me wrong. I, Hey, I'm saying I like B, I love B left too, you know, oh. like a brother, man. And I'm happy for him, you know, what he did in Tampa this year. And I hope he gets the opportunity to be in a head coach. Really do. Hell, I hope he hired me. But yeah. Um, yeah. but real real talk, I mean, come on. I think B left, the B left we today wouldn't have made that change. He wouldn't have made that change. Okay. Right. And I don't know why we made the change. A Wag Jack and and Shaq and 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 the ownership and all those guys got together, and made that decision. Um, but when you see your team, and don't get me wrong, John, we, we and you remember we changed the defense up a little bit too. We try to run some little three four schemes too now. Oh, yes, yep. but no, I, hate to go <laughs> I don't want to, you know, won't go there either. But the fact is, when you got something that's working. And we had it down packed. We had one of the biggest D lines. You wasn't just going to come in and run the ball up our butt. That wasn't happening. But the fact of the matter is, when you split us up now, you're trying to spread us out and because and, we worried about their 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 passing game. So we you feel like the rush ain't going to be as important. So we want to go more coverage with a 3-4 look and put more guys in the secondary. Dude, that's not who we were. That wasn't that, that wasn't us. And when you did when they did that. Hey, it showed. It showed, and you know what? We end up, we end up getting our heads kicked in, and you know, hey, it is what it is. It's water on the bridge now, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, they should have never made that change, bro. That's all. See, I've, I've been talking about that, man, and they know I get fired up when we talk about that. Because when you can smell the Super Bowl and you can feel it at your fingertips, whoa, man! When David came in there and told me, I just my heart just. I just don't know. So let me <laughs> ask you this. How come you guys didn't stand up as players and say, no, this isn't going to fly. We want to keep David as the QB. I'm, I'm saying, because, you know, now we're, gonna, we're getting player, you know, involvement, player movement. And then we got the quarterback saying, hey, if you're not going to let me make changes or run my offense or this, I want to be traded. How come you guys stand quiet, even though you know it was a bad move? Nobody wants. Yeah, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, John. You must be young with that question. Yeah, he is. Because <laughs> first off, even, even with that quarterback you referring to, that that's saying that you know he don't want to be there, 
he ain't going nowhere. Okay, unless unless some team really falls out the sky. Well, we got, three, so three we got, we got Russell now. Russell wants to get go. Well, I mean, you know, that's that's a different. That's different. Okay, that's a little different. <laughs> but but to go back to your point, your first point of why we didn't speak up on it. Okay, in in, in football period, especially in the NFL, especially in the NFL, because of the business the business side of things. First and foremost, you always got to think of yourself and your family first. And, 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 you know, guys, this is why you don't see too many guys speaking up because, hey, we come accustomed to a livelihood, you know, that now I'm going to go in there for another guy on my team or this guy on my team and risk myself losing my job. Nah, that ain't going to happen. That's very rarely is that ever going to happen. And, and, if, and if it does, trust me, the guy that's doing it, he best to be um, that team best to be really invested in him. Because if you're not, if the team is not really invested in you, and you go in there and start speaking out on things, on, on decisions, trust me, another decision is going to come where you ain't going to have a job. So last thing you want to do as a player, and I'm telling this from a guy that is experiencing it on both sides, you don't want, you don't want. I, I truly believe, you know what, coaches don't cut players. Players cut players. And if you made that move, that would be a mother player cutting himself. Because I've been through it, man, and I, I've been through all the training camps. I've been through the combines as a coach. And players think that, oh, coach don't like me and all this and that. No. We don't We don't sit in those staff rooms and sit there and be like, man, I don't like how that dude look. His, 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 his demeanor was just off. So I, I ain't feeling him. No, nah, I ain't feeling that. Or, or you know what, his hair was a little bit too nappy or his his little too long or a little bit too crazy or his he had cold teeth. And, man, we don't worry about all those things. Because, again, guys got to realize when you step across that threshold of NFL, it's a business first. And that's, like I said, that's it's one of the things that it pissed me off because some, some other stuff we'll hopefully we'll get to down the road on this show. But, um, but again, guys got once you understand it's a business, you can make a really career out of it and take advantage of all the things, you know, the benefits that they're going to give you. Take advantage of them. I mean, right. truly be selfish and take advantage of them. I'm here to tell you, because if you don't, like some of the stupid players out there that don't even do the 401k, that's stupid. That's free money. That's two for one. You plan 20, they're going to get 40. That don't make any sense if you don't take care of that. Because that money right there, you might not see it right then and there in your hand, but you know what? You're going to retire. You might have a family. And that 10, 15 years later, boom, that money's going to be there for you. Yes, it will. Yeah. So why not take advantage of it? Get what you can get, all what you can get. That's why Deshaun Watson signed that contract. And now you're talking about you want out. It don't work like that, bro. It don't work like that. It, it so don't you don't believe Deshaun Watson? You huh? don't believe Deshaun Watson leaving? Look here. If, if a team don't come up with a ridiculous never heard of before package i'm talking one of those packages that three for, they're asking three first rounders right now well, well what i'm saying is is you, the last ignorant package that ever happened was when um new orleans traded away all their draft picks for ricky williams remember that no you might remember be. that <laughs> you, i mean my man tony you remember that that I was the last that. time a team and i gave up everything for a player and with the problem with that New Orleans never really never did anything. Okay. It was after that when they got my man Drew Brees in there and, and then they started work and got a new coach in there and they started winning. But the fact is when you do that, when you give up so much for one guy, you hurt your team, you hurt your team. And I don't care who does it. If a, if a GM is out there wanting to go, go that route because they feel like, you know, the Sean Watson is going to get them to the promised land. They better hope he get to the promised land that first year. If you don't, it's going to be hell to pay after because now you done gave up so much, you know, compensation for him that that compensation was for you to build going forward. You didn't tore all that down to do it right now. And that's where the, the business side of things has really have come. It's about, you know, they always say, what have you done for me lately? Because they want, everybody want it right now. Everybody want it right now. And it don't work like that. Every blue moon, it happens. It happened in Tampa with Tom Brady coming down here and his first year. But you know what? That's a one-off, though. That's, that's never happened before. But, absolutely. But look what Tom Brady came with, though. He brought Gronk back. They went out. They got yeah. AP came in the, in the fold. And Tampa Bay, I already knew all those guys. 
I, I love Chris Godwin, hell of a player. We drafted. They say he might be coming to Jacksonville. Huh? They're saying he might be coming to Jacksonville if he doesn't get franchise tag. Chris Godwin? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, hey, he'll be a great, he'll be a great fit in Jacksonville. I'm talking, man, this dude, humble, hardworking, and he gets after it. I mean, physical guy. He's the guy if you ever watch him when they run in that kick play, he motions in to the in, in the line and goes inside the tight end up to either a back or a safety to block him. You don't get receivers of his caliber doing that. That doesn't that doesn't happen in the NFL. And I hope he stays with that mentality. And I know he's gonna get paid either in Tampa or somebody else, but I hope he stays with that mentality. But you know, guys get paid, man, and they start believing, they start smelling, smelling themselves and believing the hype, and they feel like, man, that, that's beneath me. Dude, that's what made you. Oh, that's that's what happened with A B. He be, start believing all the hype. And this young man out of Central Michigan, yeah, you out of Miami, and we know how Miami cats started, they wild, whatever. But, dude, you worked your butt off and become one of the best receivers in the league only to start believing, your, believing smelling, up, smelling yourself and then end up costing yourself millions of dollars. Money that you ain't going to spend, but your kids will, or your kids' kids will. It's about try to build yourself some, some wealth. But, no, nah, he didn't want to do that. He wanted to sit back, wear the fur coat, and talk shit. Now you sitting there on a one year deal, struggling, hoping that you made enough plays to get another contract next year. That's crazy. So I'm gonna so, put you on the spot now. You're talking about young people um, coming into the league. So what was your first impression when you met? You know where some going when you met Big John, and then what was it like trying to tutor him? And then his first game. You remember his first game? He said he was real nervous. I want to know what you guys thought. And I'm gonna add to it, what the hell y'all thought about that slapping shit? Because I've been like, this mofo is crazy. Man, first off, you know, when when we drafted Big John and they brought him in, like I said, you got to realize the first week John was in Jacksonville, he and I hung out. He knows. I mean, we went out, like I said earlier in the show, Jim's place, and we had a good time. You got and the shrimp, too, I hope, right? You got the shrimp? We, we had we had a couple of baskets or something up there. Yeah, shrimp's good. We had a couple of winter wings and shrimp. But anyway, um, <laughs> But John, like I said, he came in the door and we like, God, this brother big as hell. <laughs> I mean, you know, one of them big, big ass human beings, you know what I'm saying? There ain't too many guys that's six, seven, three hundred and you know, twenty plus pounds and and can move and, and do the things that John was able to do, you know. And you know, again, happy to get him. I mean, his tape didn't lie. You turned on John's college tape, he was a man amongst boys. And we all knew. When John had a bad game, because that, that was John's fault. And he knew it. It was his fault. But when he wanted to come, when John was was, was on, it wasn't the office, it wasn't the guard or center in the league that gonna block him. I mean, it it was you just knew. When I mean, I remember John had a bad game in Denver. You remember this, John, but we got on your ass about it. A little bitty guard. Oh man, Denver back then had those small offensive linemen. Guard was blocking to that John. And we were like, what the what the hell going on? I mean, we, when we didn't win the game, we didn't, we didn't win the game. But the thing about it is, we came back, and I think the next game, John had like three sacks. I can't remember what game it was. But but he, he had three sacks because, okay, John was like, you know what? Y'all, that's what y'all think of me? I'm going to show you. And that's and that's the whole thing about John. When he wanted to, it was a wrap. It, 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 was, it was a wrap. Now, again, we all get older and, 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 and things don't move and operate and work as they do. And, and, it, and the, harder, the older you get, the harder it is. That's one of the reasons why I retired at 35 years old, because it was just getting too hard to get my body ready to be able to go out there and play at a high, high, high level. So I was like, dude, I got to shut it down. I mean, it, it, I mean, I'm about to kill myself trying to put myself in shape because the hardest thing about it is not just getting in shape, it's staying in football shape when yeah. you get old. Hey, what about what about Derek Harper? Oh man, don't don't call him man, Tony. Don't put him on a spot like I that. I mean, I at least put on a nice spot. You put on a, a suspect <laughs> draft pick. Come on now. Hey, look here, man. Hey, I, I, just, I, I hope he, I'm gonna say this about Derek. I'm leaving it at that. I just I just pray that he done right by the money. I mean, he he set out as long as he did. He came in, had a couple of flashes, made some people think that. Okay, there's something there, but really, at, at, at the end of the day, I think the fact that I think that either it was maybe the money got to him, which you know that happens with players, um, yeah. or you know he really didn't love football, 
And that's the thing, you know, guys that play as long as I did and John, we love football, man. If you don't love football, man, and you and you get the opportunity to be blessed with the talent and with the physical capabilities to go out there and play and and and, and be able to learn and have the mental wherewithal to be able to go through the, the mental and the physical, you know, struggle that it takes to be a professional athlete. If you can do all that, man, look, you can have a great career. You can. But if you if you if you want to just think that, oh, man, I'm paid now. I'm great. I'm good. And I'm just going to lean back and, and let this thing ride itself out. And, bro, you ain't going to last long. And I, I think that's he might have took that mindset because you saw that once Jacksonville got tired of him, it, he, he went to, I think, Cincinnati and Denver and it yep. just never. And then I think he finished at Tennessee. He jumping around team to team to team. And, and you know, I mean, I'm going to use, I'm going to use the same guy that got drafted right behind him. And may he rest in peace. My man, Gooch, you know, um, Gooch. my man, yep. my, my man quit, came in. First of all, we shouldn't have drafted him because they put him at a position that he was just too small to play. He was out of position. He came from Auburn. He was a stand-up outside linebacker rush guy on third down. We tried to put him in three-point stance. Dude, he, he was next to John. It looked like John's son. He looked like John's <laughs> son holding John's John holding his hand, like, come on, boy, I'm gonna take you over here to the bathroom. You know, I mean, he looked like a little kid out there. He was out of position. But you know what? He got an opportunity to leave. He left. His career took off. His yep. career took off. He started balling. I mean, yeah. man, the man career took off because he got to a 314, put him in his position that he played in college, and his and what he did in college, he started doing in the league. His career took off. But he had he had the mental wherewithal to understand that, you know what, I know they didn't work out in Jacksonville, but, hey, I love ball too. And he loved ball. He would tell you. He would tell you, man. But some guys, they get, in the, they get to the NFL, and they really don't love it. They really don't. And you know what? They want the money. They want they want they want the money in actual age. They want everything to come with it, but they definitely don't want you know all the other stuff that, that means to keep it that comes with it. Because you got you got to be able to do a lot more than just be able to spend the money. So so you got into man. I had hey, hey, Spice, hey Spice, I had a situation, man. When you saying you love ball, man, it just it's just I was in Oakland, bro, and I had one of those moments when you when you know you got hurt at warm up. Oh, in Houston. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I had one of those moments, man. I'm trying to do my back did Oof. something, bro. I said, oh! I said, uh-oh. I didn't say it too loud. I said, shoot, man. It started doing something, bro. And I'm like, man, no, man. I I, I got to play. I got in, in my head, I'm telling I got to play. Man, I said, shoot me up. I said, whatever you got, shoot it now. And that's, I was like, it's, it's so crazy that you said it, man, because I love ball. I love. I didn't. Hey. I couldn't. I, man, I was that not going to sit out. I was. That's what people don't realize. I, like you said, you got hurt in warm. I got hurt in warm up in Houston. You remember that? I broke my hand. I did a little spin yeah. move. Came inside on one of our office alignment and the dumb Alvin Pyramid. I don't know if you guys remember him, but yeah. he was a running back, high yellow bro. He he come running through the damn hole full speed. And usually, because he was a rook, he was a rookie too. Usually, when you out there with the vets, nobody's really going full speed in warm up. Okay, when we do team 11 on 11 in prior to the game and pregame, but this brother was full speed. He hit my hand, broke. I broke two of my fingers right here in my left hand, and like you heard what John said, shoot it up, bro. I was like, I, I was already on the T train, John. But then they, they gave me a couple of more. They gave me a few more things. T train that tore it all, you know. What I mean, which is you know kind of it's not banned, but they don't give it out like they used to. Because boy, we used to be in that T train line, everybody. And, um, you know, lined up to get that T train. But uh, like I said, I was like, dude, because I love ball. Hey, do whatever you got to do. Wrap it up. They cast it up. And I try to go out there and play. But the problem was it was so fresh. And the fracture was, you know, not 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 the position to where I can be able to go out there and be effective. And they told me I had to bounce. Dang. And I pulled myself out. Hey, so, so Jacksonville, <clears throat> again, you and I know this. The, the history of Jacksonville sometime was they, they weren't like a like a, a Cowboys or Pittsburgh where when the draft came, they draft what they needed. Jacksonville always had that reputation. Whatever the media say, we're gonna draft them. And then when we get them, oh hell, we don't know what we're gonna do with them. <laughs> and know, then we, we had that though, Tony. We 
it's like at a certain point, we was always bringing in what we needed at this point when we hit those runs, when we hit the playoff run back to back. We 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 was bringing in the right stuff at the time, and it seemed like it just it went somewhere. I don't know because coach, you coached that 2011, 2012, right? Yeah, like you was down there then, and yeah, it wasn't they weren't doing too good then, was it? No, but that was the that was the year they knew that um, they was getting ready to sell the team. Oh, and, and they didn't they didn't you know outside of like I said drafting who they draft they drafted um, Blackman the receiver. Oh, who turned out to be another R.J. Sauer, which you know unfortunate, very unfortunate, but very you know, unfortunate. He had some issues, personal issues. We ain't got to get into all that, but you know the young man had personal issues, and and it cost him his career. You know, what people need to realize, man, is that the football players are human beings first. Yeah. They, yep. Like they, and I tell, I tell fans all the time this, and I used to, you know, especially somebody recognized me. I said, look, you ain't got to get all hype and everything because you met me. I'm just a regular dude. I wake up in the morning. First of all, thank God I woke up and I put my pants on just like you. So what's the difference? There's no difference between you and me. Only difference between me and you, I'm just a little bigger. Okay. <laughs> Like John, he just, he just, only difference between John and me, he's just bigger. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and the fact of the matter is, too many times fans and people are like, when they find out you're a celebrity, because it comes with the, it comes with the, the business. That's the yes. part of it. It just comes with the business. You, you're a celebrity. But the thing about it is, is that what people don't realize, we just human beings, man. We got, we got, we go through issues and problems. We got bills. We got, you know, people in our family that are sick and have, you know, all the things that go on in regular life that people be thinking that we oblivious to or we don't we don't experience that. And we don't have those problems, man. We got those problems just as much as anybody else out there. Yeah. You right about that. Yeah. Hey, you right about that. So you about to say something, John? I feel like you're ready to switch it up some on me. Yeah, we're going to switch it up. Uh, so I like how you talked about that. Uh, so being, you know, the fans, you know, being a celebrity and stuff. You know, with the Cam, let's circle back on the Cam Newton situation here. You know, at the top of his game, you know, like a, basically a fan, you know, disrespected him because he wasn't on top of his game. You know, yeah, he's a free agent. Yeah, he's been down, what, last two, three years. But to be disrespected like that, how do you think you guys would have handled that? And second of all, if it was your own football camp, how do you definitely handle that? Because, damn it, this is my shit. And like I'm going to Big John's camp in, 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 in Oakland, and they talk shit to me because I'm a – a Jaguar, like, I get that, but it's your own camp. So how would you guys feel about that? And what would you guys would have said to that young man? I mean, look here. I mean, me first and <laughs> foremost, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to handle it. I'm, I'm, and if I feel like it's disrespectful, then I, I got I to gotta address it. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. I just got to put the headphones off, see my kids coming back in. I don't need them hearing everything we saying. Ugh. But – I, I got you. Got to address it, and you you address the young man and let him know. Look, man, what you're talking about and what you're bringing up is not really important. This camp is not about that. This this camp is about you, young man, as as yourself coming here to get better. And if you didn't come here to get better, and you came here to try to talk about me, round me up, man, this is my camp. You can leave. I mean, you get your stuff. If you pay, if, if, if there was a if it was a paid camp or a free camp, it was a free camp, then he definitely would have been gone. If it was a paid camp, hey, I'll take some money out of my own pocket. Here you go, bud. Take that to your parents. It's see you. Get off, get off the field. TMZ would have went nuts if you pull money out of your pocket. Here's your money back. You can leave. <laughs> and they would hey, they, they could have, but that's what media do. I mean, but the fact of the matter is, is that that wouldn't overshadow the response because you're showing all those kids that that type of attitude. It's not going to get you anywhere. And and you got to address it. And you got to, you know, and Cam saying I'm rich, bro, you ain't got to tell nobody that. It seems that is just such an old, I mean, goodness, I, I heard that so many times in, in the NFL um, when guys are getting talked about, you know, and they get mad and they get in their feelings and they get, you know, they first thing come out of their mouth, well, well, F you, man, I'm rich. Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. That's the best you can do? Because old boys talking, <laughs> old boys talking about you. That's the best you can come up with. Because I mean, man, when I, you know, I mean, John, I tell you, man, I would light cats up. 
You know, I mean, I talk, <laughs> I didn't care. You know, I mean, hey, nobody told you to come to work dressed like you going to the club. No, I mean, who are you in here trying to impress? You trying to you, 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 you trying to you trying to get something up in here? I mean, who are you trying to impress? I oh. mean, you come in, you come in here dressed up like literally you going to Martini Monday. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, come hey, on, man. Hey, hey, you I ain't no no bull crap. If you came in the, the locker room, <laughs> soon you walk across the corner, spicy, spicy to see everybody to come in. Yep. He giving it to him every time. And I'm no he, red. I mean he didn't give it to slaughter though, did he? Red. What? 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 Hey, TJ, I hope you're looking. Hey, TJ, TJ, but TJ, see the thing about TJ is is that. TJ was a great dude, man. I mean, another, another, another tough. Okay, honey. <laughs> my baby girl, my little man sleeping, so I gotta, I can't be too loud. I'm glad I had the headphones on, so you guys can be as loud as you want. <laughs> but, um, but no, man, TJ, and, and I, I mean, I wish he wouldn't have had the knee injury because that brother was a football player. Yes, he, he loved, he, he, he loved the oh, game yeah. of football. He would try to knock your block off. Now he was metrosexual as hell, but <laughs> he. But the thing about him is he was short tempered, and he wasn't going to have anybody tell him what he couldn't do. Yeah, yeah. And that brother would go out there, man, and lay dudes down. Like I mean, I remember. Um, I'm trying to remember what, what game it was, but it was something that he got hurt his shoulder or something. He didn't want to come out. He he was just like, and he. We all knew he couldn't play, yeah. but he didn't know he couldn't play. <laughs> he, he, I know, I know he felt it, but yeah. he didn't want to believe. His mind wouldn't let him believe it. Yeah. And T, I mean, TJ was like, "Dude, I'm serious. Like, a, I'm talking about a pit bull with gunpowder." Oh, and, I know, man. I mean, that brother would would want to lock on you and, and wouldn't let go. And I mean, that's the type of dudes you want to go in the fire with. You want to go in the war with because you know. If you don't look to your side and you see that type of brother, you know you're good. You know he got your back, and he got to know you got his back. And but that's one of the things that made our group so great because we felt everybody didn't have to worry: do this dude got my back or not? No, man, we got your back. We hung out. We every Thursday, man, we were down at the moon and and, yeah. and different places because you know guys, you know we all got together outside of work yeah. and got yeah. to know each other as men, not just football players, but as men. We all knew what we were, but the fact of the matter is, is that, you know what, that's, that's why today, here we are 10 plus years later, I can look back and say, anytime I see TJ, if I'm, if I so happen to bump into him, I mean, man, I bumped into Reggie Nelson in Jamaica, out of the blue on the beach, just walking <laughs> down. I mean, it was the craziest thing, but the fact of the matter is I still acknowledged him. He didn't see me. I saw him. And it ain't, it ain't about being a, you know, a, a, a fan or anything like that but no but that brother reggie nelson got a bad rap and but he turned it around and turned it his career was 15 16 years yeah that's my, that's my <laughs> dude right there i mean reggie <laughs> nelson was a great player should have never we should have never got rid of him another bad executive decision but you know what uh, hey it, it is what it is what on the bridge but uh you know tj my dude i can't say he, he good thing about tj uh, uh, he was he was a he was a Metro sexual type of dude, but he wasn't one of those cats that's gonna put on, you know, if he did put on the nut huggers, he was doing it to be funny, but he, I didn't, you know, he wasn't gonna, I'm sure if, if skinny jeans were back in the day, he would probably try them on. <laughs> he probably try them on. So, John, what about you though? So, we kind of got a little off topic. What about you in the camp situation? If it would have been, you know, John Henderson's football camp like, and the like kid that. starts talking that mask, what would you have done? Like I said, man, I would have just broke it down. First of all, we wouldn't discuss it probably right there. But I'm feeling like this day and age is all about what? Uh, social media, getting your stuff up and all that. So, yep. you know, I would have gave him his little fa two, just two minutes of fame. But all I know is he's taking away from the other kids. He's taking away from this. When I need to be teaching this to let somebody uh, get this knowledge, I'm trying to give this knowledge and you want, you want the fame. Look, man, you got to go out there and make your own thing, man. You can't make your fame off of you. You can, but this is not the situation to make your fame off of YouTube or whatever you're trying to do. This is here to learn 
and get knowledge from a, a guy that's done great things or, and all that, man. And, and, and we got to stop putting each other down. It, it's, we got to stop there. If you disagree, you don't, I mean, you don't think he's a great player, then that's your opinion. But you, you know, you still want to, he still got knowledge. You know, I'm, I'm cool with you. If you don't think I'm a great player, then that's your opinion. That's just what it is. We, we can't, I'm not finna sit and argue with everybody that, because they don't think I'm a great player. That's, that's <laughs> business, you know so, you know, it just, I wish it could have been a little bit more powerful, the message that he would have sent them, because, you know, we got to stop as black people, we got to stop putting each other down. We see it, we got to, you know, be, be happy for that person, man. And you know what I'm saying? Encourage him and all that stuff, man. So I just wish it would have went a little bit more different and powerful. And of course, I would have went another way with it. So, you know, on that. But I wanted to change it up, man, because I got to give. I know it's getting late, man, and we're supposed to be off here. But I got to give honor this 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 week of Black History Month of our women. You know, yes. You know, my wife, Paul' wife, and I just know what she's done and what they got us to do. You got me out the house too, bro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, on that Biden ride, I was all over the place, man. I was like, wow, they acting like that, and we just ride. Hey, I mean, good Lord, it was, it was a lot. But you gotta be you safe, just, man. Yeah, <laughs> but just honoring the black women, man, you know, man, mama and, and the people that's before us, man. And, you know, what I, I have found out so much, like, I mean, it's movie after documents after movie is coming out, man. And, and and even even when I saw the little thing on Facebook and Kamala the uh, the pre the vice president and the soror what is a sorority and or uh, yeah uh, good lord they've been going since the eighteen I think eighteen hundred something no it's the, it's the started back in like I said my my wife is a Delta she's it? Delta what Sigma Theta and um, yes. AKA um, who what, what the VP is that that sorority started right before my wife's sorority in nineteen like. 12 or 1913 or something like yeah, that. There you go. I don't I don't know that I don't know the dates, but you know, like you said, Big John, man, I mean, people don't realize, man, black woman is is probably the strongest person walking the face of earth, you know. I mean, <laughs> and, and the things that they the shoulder, the burden that they shoulder, they they shoulder it, the burden that they shoulder every day and what they have to deal with, man, it is just astonishing. And um you you got to take your hat off to them. I mean, you know, I ain't nothing against the brothers out there that, that married another race. But at the end of the day, I, I just knew if I was going to be married, man, I'm going to have me a sister hold me down because I know that she she can burden a whole lot more shoulder, a lot more than I can. And my shoulders are bigger than hers. Right. right <laughs> you ain't lying about that. My wife is the same way, man. And it's just, when you just see, I just love it, man. That they like, can you take your wife making more than you and doing more? I like, uh, yeah, I mean, we I, can. Yeah, I can. Yeah, absolutely. I said, go ahead, go ahead, because I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it just like this. Woo, thank you, man. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And you know, she buying me. So I'm like, thank yeah, I've done it. So it's marriage is fifty fifty. Well, why can't I? Ain't gonna be mad because you making millions. No, ain't never like, that. Please never take that. care of yourself. Please <laughs> make that money, baby. <laughs> and, and you, that, you, you need a secretary, baby. Hey, I, I'll sit there and put on I tight it, suits for you. I do it. I, I write all your notes down. That's right. I sit right there. Why not? What is the what's the problem with it? I, yeah, I man. I don't. See I it. like that. We we have to do this. We it it, it ain't it ain't back in the day no more. Where they just well. Get you. And John, you you know my wife, man. I mean, like I said, when she when she put together those riding for Bidens, you know, they, yeah. they, they started here in Tampa, and um, you know, we ain't get I get into political. It ain't about Republican Democrat, man. It it was about making a change. Yeah. I mean, people was really getting sick and tired of the rhetoric of what's coming out of that dude four or five's mouth, and you know, my wife, the people here in Tampa got her involved into it, and she just took it to another level. I mean, that's what she does. I mean, my wife, somebody told her how to, I mean, showed her a little bit about reefs and then she took it to a whole nother level. And then she makes reefs that look that unbelievable now. Oh yeah, they are. They're sick. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you, you, I mean, if you look at her Instagram, the guys, you see, I mean, she, she just, she just so creative. Tell them, tell them where it is. Oh, oh, they, oh. She can go, oh, the lady with spice, the lady with spice, W I T with spice, you know, cause Bro, she's I like with me. That's catchy she, right she's, there, man. she's with me, the lady with spice and you know, her, her, 
what she got going on on Instagram, man. And I mean, she's she's got the um, interior decorating design company, and she, uh, a matter of fact, one of our neighbors here, she's redesigning their whole kitchen. I mean, I'm talking granite tile. You, I mean, free, new appliances. She, so she's putting all that stuff together. You know, with colors and all. That. I mean, I'm not interiors. I'm just kind of telling you what I I kind of see her do. <laughs> But um, but she's but she's done our, you know she's done several of the homes that we've lived in you know and I mean you know just phenomenal with the creative with the creativity and that's so you're what saying I think. you have no decor say so in your house is that what you just said oh yeah you're absolutely right but you know what the, the decor is always tasteful is always something that I can smile and be proud of when I come through the door that you know what man this is my house I mean I'm I'm happy that you know she has that eye because I mean some brothers some sisters out there not that you know. Um, talented in that in that field i'm not right. gonna say not talented ah, I'm, I'm, let me make sure i'm be clear they're yeah. not talented in that field they have talent yeah. because i truly believe as i tell young men all the time god blessed each and every one of us with a talent yeah. and, and when you don't know what your talent is just think back what came easy to you you know what tony might be a better mathematician than myself john you might be better in english than myself John might be better than science or whatever. And I mean, whatever it may be, you might be a better basketball player, John. I mean, John than, than Tony. Whatever it may be, it's those things that come easy to you. You can just, you know, no out of the blue, somebody just picked up a basketball and just started shooting. It was like, man, I can hit some shots. I mean, how am I all, all of a sudden that happens? I mean, I just and I, I tell guys that all the time, but like I was saying, with you know, with black women. They all got talent, many, many talents. And, you know, Mo, I'm glad I was able to marry one and that's very talented, multi-talented and doing big things, man. And I know it's only the sky's the limit and that thing will continue to grow. But I'm pretty your sure- wife she... sweet, Your wife is sweetheart and always been a sweetheart. But I swear, every, t every time I've ever met your wife, I'm gonna tell you something. It's gonna happen eventually. Your wife is like the perfect politician. Eventually she gonna have to go for some kind of Political. <laughs> hey, hey. hey I, I, I told her. I told her that too. She she probably do have to get in politics, man. Because <laughs> the way she did with that ride for Biden, and, and she had John and, and got Chloe involved, man. They they had a caravan of fifteen to twenty cars riding through those neighborhoods, honking on horns. I mean, they were getting the finger. They were getting the cheers. They were getting. It was crazy. But you know what? It didn't. I mean, that didn't stop her because she was when people give her the finger, she say, "God bless you." It yeah, just make people. <laughs> God bless you. You know, make, making people feel bad. Your you know? wife's strong, man. She, I'm, right, she, you, she, I'm like, she gonna be that next congressman, that next senator, boy. She got it going on. If she honestly, <laughs> if she really wanted to get into politics and 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 do it, she probably could do it. I mean, like she I could said, do I, it. I, I don't. I thought that because when we were in Jacksonville and she was running the um, you know, the bridge in Northeast Florida as a CEO, yep. and she was doing great things um, there. And, you know, again, it, it's just that she she's the person that's going to hold you accountable. And when she was running that organization, she was holding that that board accountable. And they didn't. And, and the bad thing about it is people that get a little power, they feel like, you know, they can't be told what to do or what how to do. And she was the person she's going to tell you what you need to do. And if you ain't willing to accept that, then you know what? Often it's going to fail. And that's unfortunately happened to the board. I mean, um, Bridge in Northeast Florida they end up. Um, got dissolved and rolled into the Boys and Girls Club. But, you know, she's still, you know, but she's still out there doing her thing, trying to touch other lives, man, even with her work with the Reefs. And, um, you know, the Reefs are just something that she's a hobby of hers that has now exploded. Um, you <laughs> know, take over the house pretty soon. You got to get a new house <laughs> just for man, her room. Hey, I, I, trust me, I, that's the last thing. We, we That's one of the things that we've been talking about is that we want to we want to build a house and, I thought I said, well, I'm gonna get you a room that you can just do all that, all you, all that stuff you do. You can be in one room, just 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 reef it up or whatever you know. But you know, with her and getting into interior decorating, um, you know, it's gonna move into probably you know a bunch of samples of fabric, the colors and all paint colors and all that stuff. You know, all I mean, all that things that they like. I mean, she likes to do, and it doesn't bother me. It gives her something to do. It keeps her busy, and as long as she's happy about doing it, I'm gonna keep on, um, you know inspire her to do it so um you know like she keeps inspiring me to coach you so you know it goes both ways absolutely and i got some contacts in tampa i got some stuff i'm gonna help her out with so i appreciate it that's, that's what we do man look here man spice man we really appreciate you man coming out man and, and showing your story man talking about your beautiful wife man and all the things and and giving people knowledge 
on the oh, being a player, being a coach, man. I hope a lot of people is taking a take this and and hear it, listen to it again, man, and just and, and gotta hear it. You gotta you gotta sit and listen to it, and, and mm-hmm. whatever young kid that'll help you, it'll help you get to that next level. And what not to be like? Don't do what your boy did at Cal Newton. Don't do that because it hurts you in the long run. So man, you know. This is how we do it. It's your boy, Big Hand. Got Johnny Jaguar, got Tony G, and got Paul Spicer. This is JFL Live. And guess what, people? Black History Month, we love you. And we Absolutely, out man. We out, we out of here. Do more. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>